So we are ready now to talk about the principal unit normal vector and how it is relating to what we know. So real quick recap here. We know, of course, that the unit tangent vector is a vector of length 1 pointing in the direction the curve is moving at any point on the curve. This is a vector of length 1 pointing in the direction the curve is moving. And we define this as capital vector T of our arbitrary parameter T. And this is a unit vector pointing in the direction of the tangent vector. Now we also just explored the curvature and its relationship to the unit tangent vector. So we know that the curvature kappa is a non-negative scalar that measures how sharply or how fast a curve turns at any given point. So this is a non-negative scalar. And this is measuring how sharply or how fast measures how sharp or fast a curve is turning at a given point. And we just define this two or well, three ways. We have that kappa can be defined as, for computation purposes, the magnitude of the rate of change of the unit tangent vector all over the magnitude of the tangent vector. And alternatively, we can compute this using the magnitude of the, the cross product of the velocity vector with the acceleration vector divided by the magnitude of your velocity vector cubed. So now we want to think about this relationship to what is known as the principal unit normal vector. So I want you to note that the principal unit normal vector is a vector of length 1 that points in the direction the curve is turning. So this is a vector of length 1, because it's a unit vector, pointing in the direction the curve is turning. So it's pointing in the direction the curve is turning at any given point on the curve. So let's think for a minute. If this vector is pointing in the direction the curve is turning, in other words, this means that the principal unit normal vector points towards the concavity. So it points towards the concavity at a point. So let's think about what this might look like. And give ourselves a little more room. So let's say here is our parameterized curve C, and this is parameterized by that vector-valued function R of T. And we want to choose any, any point here on the curve, so we'll say that's our point P. Now, we know that the unit tangent vector is a vector pointing in the direction the curve is moving at that point. So we know that this is a unit vector pointing in the direction the curve is moving at that point. Now what about the principal unit normal vector? So this is another unit vector, specifically pointing in the direction the curve is turning. Or in other words, it points towards the concavity. So from this same point, here is our principal unit normal vector, capital vector N. And now just in looking at this arbitrary illustration, we realize that the unit tangent vector and the normal vector are orthogonal to each other. They're intersecting at a 90 degree angle. 
So let's go ahead now and look at a more formal definition of our principal unit normal vector. So here we go. Here is our formal definition for the principal unit normal vector. So we want to let C be a smooth curve parameterized by the vector valued function R of T on an open interval such that T is greater than A and less than B. And this is of course where A and B are scalars. Now, if the derivative of your unit tangent vector does not equal the zero vector, then the principal unit normal vector is defined as follows. So we have that the principal unit normal vector, capital vector N, is a unit vector pointing in the direction at which the unit tangent vector is changing. So in other words, this is the derivative of your unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of our unit tangent vector. And we again, we just saw that this is a unit vector, a vector of length one pointing in the direction the curve is turning or pointing towards the concavity at a point on the curve. Now we have also observed some of the properties of our principal unit normal vector. We of course know that it is a unit vector. So it has a length one. So we can say that the magnitude of the principal unit normal vector is equal to the magnitude of the unit tangent vector is equal to one. Now another property that we observed is that the principal unit normal vector and the unit tangent vector are orthogonal to each other. So the capital vector N and capital vector T are orthogonal or they are perpendicular vectors, they are normal vectors. So a great way to help us check that our computations are accurate is to make a note that the dot product of the principal unit normal vector and the unit tangent vector should be equal to zero. So with that being said, let's go ahead now and look at some examples.